Ever since I once went down in a submarine with the Royal Navy, I've always been keen to see any new developments in underwater craft. Earlier this year, I was down in the West Country and I went along to a small harbour on the edge of Plymouth Sound where I'd heard that the first sea trials of a brand new miniature submarine were taking place. I'd arranged to meet the man behind the project so I could find out how the tests were going and take a closer look at the sub itself. Well, this is the X2. It's made out of fiberglass and marine ply and it's painted bright yellow. The power comes from two six-volt batteries. They drive a small propeller to give a speed of one and a half knots. The rudder is connected to a joystick in the cockpit and the stick also controls the two side fins to make the submarine go up or down. But perhaps the most interesting mechanism on this craft is the plug hole. And that's because the X2 is a wet submarine, which means when it goes down, water rushes in through the plug hole and the whole of the cockpit fills up with water. So you need full diving kit to use the X2. And its inventor, George Cook, lent me a wetsuit so I could go down with him. George's invention is a kind of underwater jeep. It could be used by divers on research or salvage work to ferry them around and carry the tools. But the X2 is still very experimental and photographer Brian Jones goes down on every dive with a film camera so that George can study its performance. Brian was packing his camera into a special case. This doesn't just keep the equipment dry, it also protects it from the pressure of water and the controls are connected through the casing. That's all that sealed off now. Yeah. This is the... I think to wire in the spring motor. Shut your lease. Uh, this is the viewfinder, is it? That's right. You line your eye up with that pip and the hole in the middle of the plate. Ah, yeah. Uh, what do you think visibility is today? It looks fairly flat now, I should think about 15 feet. Oh, so you're able to see it's quite clear in, in oh, the yes. sub. I hope so. ...to the water, and I join them to go aboard. This isn't the first time a new submarine has been tested at Plymouth. One of the very first underwater craft was launched here 200 years ago by a man called Dennis Day. As it disappeared beneath the waves, spectators observed a rippling and bubbling of water, and that was the last they saw of it. We didn't want a repetition of that, so we got two support divers standing by just in case of accidents. With a prototype, you can't afford to take any chances. Have you had a passenger in here before, George? Oh, you're the first one. I'm the first one? Don't worry, I'll bring you back. It's not going to sink, is it? I hope so. Oh. <laughs> Brian was all set with his camera to film the dive. We'd taken the plug out and fixed the plastic cover cockpit. George promised me that we wouldn't be underwater for long, just straight down and with a bit of luck, straight back up again. Everything went quiet, I knew we were fully submerged. The water was fairly muddy, but we could just see Brian filming beside us, so I gave him a wave. The depth gauge had reached 20 feet, and George was still taking us down. A slight bump, and we were on the bottom, nudging our way through the seaweed. Then George pulled back on the stick to head the X2 up towards the surface. That looked great fun. We've heard that the rest of the test did in fact go very well indeed.